many African countries and it's been driven largely by women and youth. A few of these trendsetters visited Washington to talk about their work. But, um, how the youth... This is the new generation of youth that is driving technology and innovation in Africa. Here in Washington, at the invitation of the Woodrow Wilson Center, which co-sponsored the event, they came to highlight the latest developments and inspire the next generation. First panel moderator Kevin Urama says youth and women are bridging Africa's digital and technological divide. The youths are very innovative. They're, they are very high-risk takers. They are really evolving different kinds of amazing social innovations that are addressing critical problems. Critical problems like what to do with recyclable waste, which 18-year-old Diana Mungare is solving through her Planet Green organization in Nakuru, Kenya. She says she was inspired by the late environmentalist Wangari Mathai. She's such a great inspiration because um, when I was growing up, I could see all her efforts and I could say, like, this is something I want to do, you know. Another, how to ensure that Africa's mostly women farmers are paid and their produce sold, which MFarm is tackling using the mobile technology transfer M-Pesa. Once the woman or the lady farmer subscribes to our system, once she sells through our system, we send money directly to her phone via mobile money. Other startup companies like Vivus Renewals and Afro Lehar address alleviating poverty and better branding Africa. Afro Lehar is uh, established to do a public relation communication strategies to promote Africa in the, in the U.S. and Canada to change perception through different user experiences and different ventures. Uh, with Vivus, we're trying to make sure that women have access to better income and uh, that they benefit from uh, you know a better social services. The event also addressed the issue of sustaining the new generation of women and youth to be leaders in science and technology. Panelists urged young innovators to think globally and women in particular to aim higher. Panelists also added the importance of creating innovations that create jobs. It's great that we have people who are energized and want to code and create technology, but if we're not actually creating jobs, if we're not facilitating economic activity, we're really not solving the problems and challenges that we have, namely the youth unemployment. African women will need to embrace development, will need to embrace science and technology, and to empower themselves. Panelist Kevin Urama says sustaining innovation also entails providing a conducive technology environment, which he urges governments to do. The governance issues are also there in terms of recognizing these youths and giving them platforms to express themselves and to be able to be appreciated. And also the market structures are not really very favorable. Well, joining me now in studio is Richard Seshi, the founder of Vivus, and Liz Ngonzi, an international entrepreneur and currently at Cornell University. Thank you so much for both of you being here today. And I know you're about to jet off somewhere because you're such innovators. <laughs> I want to start off with you, Richard. You know, you told me something so interesting about how you got started with your company. You were frustrated. Yes, exactly. Uh, so I spent some time in India in 2008, and uh, I was frustrated with the high prices of fruits and vegetables. Once I came back into Ghana, and uh, so this sparked an interest to actually uh, investigate the supply chain of agricultural food produce and do something about it. Now, is that the new thinking of the generation of, of your group right now that... There's a problem, I'm going to fix it. And whether or not it's money-related, I'm going to fix, find a way. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think uh, you had that huge interest to do something about, about it. You recognize that there's a problem, a social problem, and you feel the urge to contribute to that and to make a difference. It's just really inspiring. And I mean, you know, Liz, you've been in the tech world for a long time. You, and right now you're an entrepreneur in residence at Cornell University, still learning. Over the years, what are you seeing in terms of how really far is Africa in, in terms of technological advancement and what are the you know, aspirations Africa can, can, can at least hope for in terms of catching up? Well, I mean, I think it's, this is such an exciting time to be a young person in Africa, I must say that. I think that the fact that there are so many opportunities for, them, for young people to express themselves through technology is quite phenomenal, and as, as I, you and I spoke. Uh, the kind of innovations that are coming out in terms of mobile technology and the applications are quite phenomenal. Um, of course, 
while we have great um, applications coming out of the continent and young people are developing incredible technology, we need to learn how to scale. We need to make sure that we can monetize all of these innovations because at the end of the day, we need to be able to create jobs. Mm -hmm. We need to facilitate economic activity and help to move the continent forward uh, economically. And I really do believe the opportunity does lie in entrepreneurship and technology um, is definitely a great um, way to do so. Now, what do you see in terms of uh, governments being able to facilitate that and make that happen? The last uh, comment we ran from Mr. Rama was that the capacity is an issue and that okay. governance recognition sometimes of youth's ability. Um, I definitely think that we, the government needs to realize, especially these governments, are, are their, their countries are majority youth, young people, so mm -hmm. they need to start really kind of um, tailoring their services to them. I mean, I, I think about when I started my business uh, about 12 years ago, I had the benefit of using the Small Business Administration tools here in the U.S. What does a young person have mm -hmm. to access on the continent? Not necessarily anything. So I really think that through private, public-private partnerships, that the, the the governments on the continent can really start mm -hmm. to put around, put some structure around uh, the services that can help entrepreneurs to begin, mm -hmm. as well as to grow their 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 businesses, and ultimately the governments benefit because then you have taxable income. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, you know, so Absolutely. It makes sense. Well, Richard, what, what has been your experience in terms of when you started Vivus and um, how you're able to sustain it? What, what, when you think in the future, is it a sustainable business? How do you see it being supported? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think what's really exciting right now in Africa is that mobile is mainstream. You have over 700 million mobile phone users. And uh, the services uh, must be built on top of mobile services. I mean that you have value-added services that are for pure profit, but we can also have value-added services that actually deliver some sort of social impact. And this is what uh, Vivus is doing. Uh, so we recognize that agriculture uh, which basically where you have, uh, which represent more than 60% of GDP of the lot of countries, mm -hmm. uh, would be a sector that where we could actually make a difference. Uh, so Vivos is basically a lab, if you want, mm -hmm. uh, where we're developing solutions uh, that are meant at the agricultural sector, especially for smallholder farmers and for women vendors. Uh, so for example, one of the solutions that we're currently exploring mm -hmm. uh, in Accra is that uh, you have a produce, food produce that mm -hmm. is being sent uh, through trucks in, uh, in the main cities. Mm -hmm. And uh, it happens that at the end of the day, you have up to 20 to 30 percent of that food produce that is not being sold. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so it's, that's where you're, you're able to help in the distribution of it. We only have a few mm -hmm. seconds left, but tell me, Liz, your, um, your prospects that you have for Africa. You see both sides. Right. You see what's going on here, what's going on in right. Africa. How? I'm really, I'm really excited. I'm excited because not only are our young people um, coming up with some amazing innovations, the innovations that they're coming up with can have a global um, mm -hmm. influence. And, and I was talking about Ushahidi. Yeah. Ushahidi was created uh, in Kenya. In Kenya, and uh, it was used here and in it was, the U.S. Yeah, elections. Most, yeah, mostly recently used. So yeah. that's exciting. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Richard, are you proud of yourself? Absolutely. Well, <laughs> we all are too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. That's uh, Liz Ngonzi and Richard Seshi joining us here on Africa 54.